Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Pretty here. In today's video, I'll be talking about the lazy parameter in your relationships in Flask SQL Alchemy. So here I have the model that I created in a previous video, the video called Once Many Relationships in Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'll be using the same model and pretty much very similar data, but I'll be demonstrating how this lazy here works. So what this lazy means is how the data for the relationship is loaded. So typically when you run a query, you get everything back all at once. But if you change the lazy to something else, then your data may load at the beginning or it may load later on when you actually access the data. So I'll give you examples of all those so you can see it in action. So to do that, I need to enable SQL Alchemy Echo just so you can see the queries that are getting run. So SQL Alchemy underscore Echo. I'm going to set that to true. And right now the lazy is set on dynamic. So I'll demonstrate what that means. I'll start up my Python REPL and I will import from lazy. So DB person and pet. I believe I have one person in the database. So let's see, person, query, all. And yes, I have one person. So you can see that person here. And then you see here the query that gets run. So these first two queries are just uh, kind of housekeeping queries. And this query at the bottom is the query that I'm actually interested in. So you see select person as person and the name as person name from person. So it's giving me the data for that person. So this goes on behind the scenes. SQL Alchemy takes care of generating that query for you. So it's not that important, but in this case, you'll see what it means. So if I were to type, first, let me assign this one person to a variable. So let's call this person, person dot query first to give me the one and only person in the database. So person, and I have person one. So with this, what I want to do is I want to get the pets that the person has. So I have this relationship defined. So if I type person.pets, that will give me all the pets this person has. And it returns an appender base query object. So I need to type person.pets.all, and then it gives me the pets. So pet1, pet2, and pet3. And looking here, I see there's another query, select pet ID and the pet name and the owner ID from pet. So that query was executed as soon as I type person.pets.all. So the reason why it worked that way is because I'm using dynamic as the lazy, meaning for the relationship, generate a new query that I can then modify and execute. So by executing the query, I mean just typing dot all. But if I change this lazy to something else, if I change it to select, so there are four lazies. The first is select, and that can also be true. It's the same thing. So let me restart the REPL and then I'll import everything. So from lazy import star, just so I can be lazy and import everything at the same time. So now when I type person, well, I need to assign this. So person equals person, that should be capital P. So person dot query dot all or first, because there's only one and you see, I have this one query. So select person and the name from person, Limit and offset, I just limit one, offset is zero. That's what this, these two numbers in these parentheses mean. So then when I type person.pets, I get the pets right away. So I don't have to type dot all anymore because I'm no longer using dynamic. Dynamic is the only one that allows you to use a separate query. So in the case of dynamic, I can add things like filters. I can add an order by for the relationship query because I'm using the dynamic lazy. In this case, I'm no longer using the dynamic lazy. I'm using the select lazy. So what this means is it's going to separate out the query for the person and the query for the pet. So two different queries get executed because it's waiting for you to select the pets after you have the person. But you can also combine them and get them at the same time. So what I'll do is I'll modify this and I'll change 
lazy to be joined. And join can also be false for lazy, but the name is better. So join means it's going to join the two tables, so person and pet, and it's going to return all the results to you all at once. So only one query will get executed. So if I run this again, from lazy import star, and then I get the person. So person equals person query first to get the first person. So now in this query, I'm going to get both the person and all the pets that belong to that person in one query. So I hit enter and look at the query here. So select person ID, person name, and then you see there's a pet ID here and a pet name and a pet owner ID and it's selecting from select person as person ID, person, person name. So you see it has those two queries and then it has a join here on pet. So this is just one query. So when I type person.pets, I immediately get the pets. You see there's no query that's being run here when I type .pets. That's because everything is being returned all at once. So the reason why this is important is because let's say you want to send this data to your template and you don't want your template to be running queries, then you need to send it as a join or as the next thing that I'm going to do in just a moment. If you don't mind a second query being executed, then you can use select. And if you want to be able to modify the relationship in any way, then you use dynamic because the dynamic allows you to type like filter or limit or Anything else that you can add to a SQL Alchemy query before you type dot all or dot first or dot count, whatever the method you use to execute the query. So I'll show you the final one. So I've done select, I did joined, which is the one I have now, and I've done dynamic. I also want to do subquery. So subquery does the same thing as join, except instead of a join, it uses a sub subquery. So start this from lazy import star and person is going to be equal to person dot query dot first and now if I look at this I see a different query so it is selecting the same thing and it has a from here but the join is a lot simpler. So in this case, it didn't use a subquery, but you can see instead of a left outer join that it used before, it's just a normal join. So it, it is a little different. You can see the limit and offset are in this query and not uh, the one down here. It's just how SQL Alchemy generates the query for you, but just know that what happens in person, or excuse me, what happens in the join and the subquery is the same result. It just is a different way of doing it. So maybe there will be a performance difference between the two so you can test both of them to see which faster. So if I type person.pets, you see there is no query executed again. So now let me change it back to dynamic and I'll start this one more time. So from lazy import star and then I'll type person is equal to person query first and you see it just does this one query and it actually doesn't because I didn't save this properly so let me try it because if I type person.pets it gives me the pets again so it wasn't saving it so from lazy import star let's try that again so person is equal to person query first and now we see it has the one query. There's no join and there's no subquery there. So if I type person.pets, it gives me this appender base query object, meaning I can write stuff like person.pets filter by, and I can say something like ID equals one and then all, and it gives me just one pet. Or I can type person.pets limit to all and it gives me two pets. So you can see that th that dynamic part allows me to add additional things to the query before calling all. So the dynamic is the most flexible, but you may not always want to use it depending on your use case. 
So that's it for lazy. I know it's a little difficult to understand, so I hope those examples helped you a little bit. Of course, if you don't understand everything completely, you can just ask me in the comments below and I'll try to help you out to increase your understanding. So remember that I have the Flash SQL Alchemy Basics course on my website. You can go to prettyprinted.com. It's free to enroll. It's going to have a topic like the one I just covered in the course, but at the time of filming this video, I don't have it. So just combine what you learn in this video with what you learn in the course here. And there are a ton of videos and it's all free. And hopefully that will help you understand Flash SQL Alchemy more. So if you have any questions on this video, you can leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.